breaking news tonight. The Washington Post is now reporting that former FBI Director Andrew McCabe has been fired. Yes, the embattled former FBI uh, director uh, is, you know, we know what happened with him. We know that his wife, obviously, was running for uh, state uh, representative, got help from Terry McAuliffe. Uh, of course, his PAC donated hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to her campaign. It was not revealed at the time, and that raised a huge problem. And he's been embattled now for, you know, several months. A lot of us thought he would have been fired a long time ago. Remember his pension, he would have kicked in his pension on Sunday. Yet if he's fired today, looks like that pension will not kick in. Uh, San Francisco attorney Harmeet Dillon, who's also the National Committee woman for the Republican National Committee for California, is with us now. Harmeet, breaking news tonight. Uh, I mean, this, this really should have happened uh, a long time ago. I don't know why they wait until two days before uh, he would retire and his pension would kick in. But nevertheless, this is the news tonight. Your reaction? Well, I agree with you, Laura. I think this should have been done a while back. And uh, the FBI Director Ray uh, has already taken steps to remove McCabe from any positions of authority. But I guess the triggering event here is the Office of Professional Responsibility investigation and recommendation. And I guess the Attorney General did not want to act until he had that recommendation in hand and make the decision himself. So. Uh, I'm glad this action has been taken. Clearly, Mr. McCabe was at the heart of a number of troubling controversies at, at the FBI, starting before the election and then continuing through today. So maybe this is the beginning of some reckoning happening at the FBI with this head rolling. And of course, there are others, uh, Lisa Page, Peter Strzok, and others who are involved in these. Yeah, we have the Peter Strzok news. Yeah, we have the Peter Strzok news that we're, we're also going to get to his relationship with the judge who has since recused himself. Let's go to Alan Dershowitz. Uh, Professor Dershowitz, uh, this just broke minutes ago. The Washington Post, McCabe is out. Your reaction? Well, I want to see the evidence. If the evidence conclusively demonstrates that he was less than candid and misled investigators, then the firing seems justified. But I think you have to have a fairly high threshold to fire somebody on the eve of his retirement and take away a pension that he's earned over a long, long period of time. Twenty years. Of 20 pretty years. good service. So yeah. yeah, I want to see this. I want to see the evidence. If the evidence justifies it, fine. As far as Strzok is concerned, that seems to me an open and shut case for firing. Yeah, uh, that's we're going to get to, we're going to get to Strzok. Case. Yeah, let's because, get to Strzok in yeah. a minute. And let's hold that separately okay. because that's a separate issue involving the judge in the case. Uh, which again, this mm -hmm. comes out today after investigative reporter Sarah Carter breaks the story. Which, I mean, it's like we keep saying every day, it can't get worse, but it keeps getting worse. Joining us now, and we're delighted she's with us, is Sarah Carter, who broke the story about Peter Strzok's friendship with the judge in the case. Sarah, uh, we were talking just a few minutes ago in the hallway. You said keep your eye out for the McCabe firing. It could happen. You have good sources in justice because it did happen. Tell us what led to this happening two days before he would have gotten his pension. I mean, it seems a little odd that it would be happening this late. Why did it take this long for the Office of Professional Responsibility to come to this decision? Okay, the Office of Professional Responsibility, OPR, did come to the decision that they wanted him fired after, after Michael Horowitz uncovered a lot of information on Andrew McCabe. The inspector General. It's exactly, the Inspector General at the DOJ. And that was then referred to OPR. And I think there's a lot of extenuating circumstances here. I don't think we've heard everything. I think there's a lot more than just misleading the IG and the FBI and also leaks, which is what has been reported, right? So we don't, we only know a little bit. Give us the, give us the two or three things that are the most egregious that have been out there that called into question his professionalism in handling his job. Oh, I, I think certainly the leaking to the media, number one. Yep. Uh, also the fact that he lied. He basically lied to the FBI, to his own employers, and to the IG. And I think that about once, about oh about his relationship actually and his friendships with Strzok about what was happening happening with the Hillary Clinton email investigation and remember he he gave that information to the Wall Street Journal apparently he authorized that and when they broke that story and then he went back and the IG said hey were you responsible for authorizing these leaks he said no. 
That's according to sources that I've spoken with. But I think this goes far beyond that. I think they're also looking at possible criminal charges. And that's wow. very serious. Wow. Uh, Alan Dershowitz and mm -hmm. Harmeet. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Harmeet first. Criminal charges against Andrew McCabe. This is the second time I've heard this today. Uh, the earlier time was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon from one of my sources in the Justice Department today that said, you all know just a little bit of what's gone on with Andrew McCabe. Again, 20-year veteran of the department, very well respected for years, and yet apparently we don't know what the OPR knows and what the inspector general knows. We'll, we'll be finding out in the coming days. Harmeet. Yes, I would have to agree with Sarah. It, it seems hard to believe that he would get fired for simply the leaking, although the leaking is obviously very egregious. The Wall Street Journal story that came out that was the um, product of those leaks was, you know, clearly attempted to paint his role in a different light than was true, and a lot of other politicking going on in that story. So that was pretty shocking. But this seems like turnabout is fair play in a way. We all know, we've seen the stories about how, um, you know, General Flynn has been indicted and asked to plead guilty on, on charges of uh, a lie to the FBI, and where you have the FBI, number three in command, and temporarily number one in command, lying himself to other FBI agents, it oh, seems appropriate yeah. to hold them to the same standard. Uh, Professor Dershowitz, again, this is, this is wild. On a Friday night, two days before a mm -hmm. man who's served the government for decades and was very well respected before the Hillary email investigation, I think, took place, to mm -hmm. be fired in this way, uh, I, I, have to, I have to take Sarah and her reporting to heart here. I don't think they would risk firing him were it not for some fairly serious information that has come to light and that will be reported in the I, by the IG. That sounds right to me. This afternoon, I was saying that I think there has to be a high burden before you fire somebody who's performed in a distinguished way for 20 years. But I have a lot of experience with the OPR, the Office of Professional Responsibility, they don't generally go after their own. They generally whitewash their own. And when the OPR comes to this conclusion, you really have to give it some credibility. I still want to see the evidence, but I bet you we'll see evidence that's far more compelling than what we've heard about up to now. And when they're talking about criminal charges, that sounds very, very serious. It's distressing because I had a lot of respect for McCabe based on what people who've worked in the FBI have told me over the years. But you can't have a double standard. You have to have the same standard for Democrat, for Republican, for people who've been in the FBI, and for civilians. And, and if that standard has been met for criminal prosecution and for firing, so be it. And folks, we just got the attorney general's statement, which I'm going to read. Uh, he writes, the FBI expects every employee to adhere to the highest standards of honesty, integrity, and accountability. As the OPR proposal stated, all FBI employees know that lacking candor under oath results in dismissal and that our integrity is our brand. Pursuant to Department Order 1202 mm -hmm. and based on the report of the Inspector General, the findings of the FBI Office of Professional Responsibility and the recommendation of the department's senior career official, I have terminated the employment of Andrew McCabe effective immediately. He goes on to say, the FBI expects every employee to adhere to the highest standards of, uh, of honesty, integrity, and accountability. And then he, he went on to say, both the Office of Inspector General, General and the OPR reports concluded that McCabe had made an unauthorized disclosure to the news media, Sarah said, and lacked candor under oath on multiple occasions. So this, this seems, mm -hmm. in the way it's worded, this right. seems like an open and shut case. You cannot make, uh, you cannot make exceptions even for someone with a very distinguished career as a civil servant, as a career professional. You know, people make mistakes for a variety of reasons or people do things for a variety of reasons. I'm not gonna uh, try to get into his head, but I do not think mm -hmm. the Office of Professional mm -hmm. Responsibility and Sessions with all of the media spotlight on them would take this action were it not very serious.